everyone and welcome back to the United Star and another episode of the Starcast. We've got a full house here with Priyan, Sid and Vishesh. We're very excited to talk to you about, well, Manchester City's championship win. Uh, Liverpool have not at least retained it. So we're happy about that. But I think it's a foregone conclusion now. I don't think anyone's stopping this City jugular. Pep Guardiola has just worked it out. There is no striker and yet it doesn't matter. Ilkay Gundogan is playing like Yaya Toure. De Bruyne is yet getting back into the team. Ruben Diaz has turned into Vincent Kompany. How do you stop this Man City team? Just pray. <laughs> Just pray. No, Prashnam, when, you, when you look at it, this was more or less expected. When you're going to pay something like a billion dollars on your defence and, you know, we've heard this outright. They just keep buying 60 million players. And they just sell them off if it doesn't work well. Like, for example, let's look at John Stones. Didn't do well for two seasons. He's come all of a sudden and replaced Laporte. No one's talking about Laporte not being in the side anymore. If, if this happened at United, it would have been a completely different ballgame. I mean, if today we drop a player like Harry Maguire, tomorrow the news will be Harry Maguire's dropped. But there's no news on City's end that, oh, Laporte is dropped and John Stones has replaced him because he's a better player. So, when we look at it from a holistic approach, when when we're talking about Manchester United, it's more that, um, you know, we're we're so hyped up by the media in a manner that we cannot make certain decisions that other clubs can, A, financially, and B, because of the uh, impact will happen on the social media side of things. Because when City started off weak, we didn't see their fan base go crazy saying pep out. But we start, we play two bad games and we have our managers head on, you know, ready to cut it off. So, I, I think I think uh, City are a great Vishesh, I would like to, I'd like to defer away. I don't think, Vishesh, for the past three months, at least, there's been any talk about Oli being out. I don't think there's been any pressure that's on his not, job. That's because, that's, because, that's because no one expected us to age, I mean, a fight for the title in the manner right, that so we Vishesh, were. What I'd say is I'd like to give our fan base a little credit here because when, mm-hmm. when he's produced the results, I think people have backed him fully. And I don't think the Laporte and Maguire argument is right because at the end of the day, First of all, no, Prashan, Prashan, just tell me, tell me one thing. If, Jones, so, I mean, no, it's just not tell me one happen. thing. If, if come tomorrow, we have a fit Eric Bai, okay, and we 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 need to play him, it's not, you're not going to drop Maguire, you're going to drop Lindelof. And let me be honest, I think Gary Neville came out and made the statement that Lindelof and Maguire are good defenders, they're just not good together. If, if we play Eric Bai and Lindelof, that will also be a great partnership, but we will not do that. Because we know the repercussions of dro- dropping Harry Maguire. There are three but repercussions. Why would you wish it? In my view, Maguire captain. is easily the best defender in Man United. Easily the I, best. I think I think there's a bias to that. Lindelof is not given the credit where it's due just because Maguire is club captain. I think everyone just you know pulls down on Lindelof. I think he plays an integral role of the. In but the I side think it's the well. other way. I think I think everyone pulls down on Maguire. I think people look for Maguire's mistakes. That's my point, right, Prashant? That's my point. When, when Gary Neville said that Maguire and Lindelof are great defenders but they don't go well together that's my full thing if if right now you're picking on lindel or you're picking on lindelof and i'm picking on maguire i'm saying generally if maguire is every ever ever dropped from united side it'll be havoc in the media and in the fan base that's my point but we before, before 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 if you drop before maguire from city i like for a game or two city fans aren't going to go like oh what the fuck is going on sorry before maguire came in we saw lindelof and bai and they were not they weren't like very good they didn't have such great results, but Maguire can play with Bai. We've seen how well he plays with Bai, and we've seen him play with Lindelof too. Last season, they were very good. And uh, so, Harry Maguire is definitely the best defender we have at United, for sure. I no, there, there's, a, that, that, there's a full different debate to last season that I've understood, Prayan. The way, you know, the way United started off last season, we won the side that we are now. We've transitioned into that side. If you ask me, uh, when when Ole became our permanent manager, the two signings we needed were Aaron Van Bissaka and Harry Maguire, which we got to solidify our defence. Now, if we look at our team, we are looking for, we're possibly in the market for a right-back because, uh, let's be honest, Van Bissaka doesn't provide that attacking uh, threat that we want from our wing-backs to cross the play. So, something similar to what Luke Shaw has been doing, right? So, as the team has evolved, so 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 has our requirements. And personally, as we're arguing right now, we need another centre back. At the moment, we cannot replace Harry Maguire because Harry Maguire has like three things: a) he's club captain; you just don't just drop him; b) he's your most expensive player; and c) he's the one who stays fit all the time. So you cannot just drop him on those. No, but counts. Richard, there's a fourth thing: he's easily the best centre back we have at the club. 
on individual ability eric bai is a red card away every game he plays is a red card or an injury away harry maguire is easily the most sensible and most consistent center back we have at the club he will produce 6 or 7 out of 10 performances week in week out he's not going to win you matches but he's the one who makes he he definitely in my view by any measure is the best center back we have at the club victor lindelof i personally think victor lindelof and maguire is a best partnership i don't trust bai i know he has had a good few good games but again he's going to get injured and he's not consistent enough so when he's fit put him in well and good but maguire easily in my mind is the best center back we have at the club and there is no comparison like lindelof and bai are not even close in terms of the temperament he has how many penalties has maguire given away That's, that's how many penalties has Bai given away? How many times has Maguire got penalties? We're talking, no, no, Prasad, we're comparing, we're comparing uh, Maguire to Lindelof. We aren't talking about Bai. We we all agree no, that no, Bai so is I'm, a worse player. You compare him to Lindelof as well. Even even compared to Lindelof, Harry Maguire has a lot more quality than Victor Lindelof, and I have no doubt in my mind. I think this is just a conversation people make because of the factors you said that he is club captain. He is the most expensive player, so people are trying to people are expecting to see Van Dijk. Let me put it this way: if if we get if we get the likes of uh, Jules Conde or Jules Conde or whatever his name is from Sevilla, who is fast on the ball but is not tall, he's around about five ten. Do you only play Maguire with him? You don't see Lindelof in the side anymore. No, you think? Of course, you play. The problem is right now we can't drop Maguire at all because there is no other replacement. Of course, you rotate Maguire. Even a player like Maguire needs rotation. You can't expect him to play fifty games a season every year. You can't expect that out of him. But yet, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you discard Lindelof or you discard Bai. But that won't change the fact that, in my view, Maguire is by far easily the best centre back. It's not about whether you drop him or no. But I don't think Lindelof is better than him. You, of course, rotate him. There's a big difference between rotation and dropping him. I wouldn't drop Harry Maguire at all. I would rotate him. Yes, drop him. Never. No, so the I mean I know this has gone on a tangent. We were talking about City and we've gone into Manchester United centre back pairing, but uh, my point being, if we get uh, the Sevilla centre back, okay, okay, obviously we would be dropping one centre back out of the two pairings that you're currently seeing. Yeah, of course you drop Lindelof. Lindelof. That's Lindelof. easy. That's not even a question. Of course you drop Lindelof. Okay. Yeah, I know Lindelof gets dropped, but my reason for Lindelof getting dropped would only be those three points that a. No, my reason for Lindelof getting captain. dropped is that Maguire is easily better than Lindelof. Easily better than Lindelof. Good, good. Okay. Okay. I think Lindelof is the second best centre back at the club. I don't think Bai is that. There's no doubt in my mind, and there is no third centre back. I don't count to Anzebi. I don't count Jones. They're they're not that. They are not Manchester United. Said, uh, this is being recorded on Jones' birthday, so happy birthday, Jones. Happy birthday, Phil. We love you. Yeah, probably Phil Jones needs to go out uh, to West Ham and re- rejuvenate his career as well. <laughs> It's his birthday, man. At least be courteous to him. <laughs> no, but like you've mentioned West Ham, so why not we? Why don't we just get into that? What, what are your What are your takes on Jesse Lingard's performances at West Ham? I didn't expect him to, you know, put in such shifts that he has. Like straight off the bat, scoring two goals on his debut. I think he scored one today. He's already provided assists. What's your take on Jesse Lingard and West Ham? Do you see him building a career with David Moyes? Do you see him coming back? What's your take? Uh, I don't think he comes back. I don't think he comes back to United. I think with United he's as good as done. But uh, I think what he needs is regular game time, and that's what he's getting at West Ham. And I mean, I I, I really <laughs> liked him when he was at United. I liked him as a player. I liked. Uh, The uh, I I like the ch- the charm that he brings to the game. I like it, but uh, again, I I don't think like he was in United quality. Uh, not to say that we don't have players who are who can be who are as good as we want want in the United team right now. But uh, still, I mean, uh, he had a good season. I think the Mourinho season. But otherwise, I think uh, he's more fit for West Ham or uh, that level of team. So I I just want to jump in here and say that I want Jesse Lingard to have the form he's having for West Ham continuously till the end of the season because I agree that he doesn't have a future at Manchester United anymore, right? So if Lingard has that form till the end of the season, we definitely need a CDM. Scott McTominay is not a CDM. Fred is not good enough to be a CDM, and we need a CDM of Matic's prime quality, right? And there is a CDM in West Ham who can provide. that for us okay that's declan rice i'm not saying a straight swap for declan rice 
but probably Lingard and some cash for Declan Rice. You know what, Sid? You know what, Sid? The CDM at West Ham, when you said there's a CDM at West Ham that we can swap, my first thought was Thomas Suchek. It wasn't Declan Rice, to be honest. Declan Rice, I mean, for all his quality, I don't think this guy is all that people make him out to be. He's a, he's a hyped-up Mark Noble. Sideways, backward, sideways, backward, sideways, backward with one screamer a year. So there's a reason why nobody in Chelsea's establishment apart from Frank Lampard wanted Declan Rice. I, I really don't see Declan Rice as a viable option for United. But talking about Lingard, I, I disagree with Priyan a little bit. I think Lingard is United quality, but he's not going to get game time. He's going to be on the bench. He is, and he walks into any Premier League. I think even he could even walk into this Arsenal team, to be honest. The current Arsenal team, I think Lingard could walk into that. I think Jesse Lingard is a very good player. And like Priyan said, the energy he brings is... I mean, even after you saw the goal today, he's just joined a club and everyone's, you know, chimed in with him. Everyone's tuned in with him. So, he's a great guy. I mean, he's been through a lot. And I think it's great that, you know, he's getting game time. But yeah, his career at United is done for the simple reason because he's competing directly with who is obviously our best player in Bruno Fernandes. And if Donny van der Beek is not getting in, getting a look in, I don't think Jesse Lingard is going to get a look in. So, if his his career at United is done, and I, I mean, if he stays at West Ham, good enough. If he moves somewhere else, good enough. But more than more than a swap or whatever, we get a good transfer fees. What I'm after, because I mean, anyway, swaps in football are a thing of the past now. And I don't really want Declan Rice at the club. I think there are a lot better CDMs. I think Thomas Sochek is a better CDM than Declan Rice if given the chance. Uh, you know yeah, what? You guys. Have, you guys... I'm sorry. I'm just, I just want to jump in and say I don't think that swaps are a thing uh, from the past. Yeah. Anymore because sure, I, I was just I was just going to touch on that. Yeah. So I think the yeah, way because I think now, I think with the current uh, COVID situation yeah. that we're in. Yeah. So, so you can go uh, ahead. That's fine. No, you go ahead. Okay, so with the with the current COVID situation that we're in, you know, we clubs don't have that big money spending of let's say let's spend seventy million on a player. Rather than that. You remember the financial fair play or full video that we did where you know how the money is divided uh, between for like a four-year period or what whatnot. I see a lot of swaps happening. I, I can I can see big name players being swapped rather than going for high high prices because teams don't have that uh, kind of financial power right now. I mean, we can forget City and PSG because FFP rules and you know money just don't apply to them. But when we're talking about other teams, I can see a lot more transfers happening and You've mentioned Suchek. You've mentioned uh, Lingard. What's the what's your take on Pogba's current situation? I hear that Pogba and United are getting back to talking uh, for the new deal. So, if he signs a new deal, your take on that? If he doesn't sign a new deal and he's going to Madrid, it'll most likely be a swap. In which case, who would you like to see from there? A lot of a lot of noise about uh, Varane not signing a new contract. Could that possibly be a case? So, which is, are you saying we're basically going to have Madrid centre back pairing next season? I'm not saying uh, anything. Ramos is not I'm just asking you. I don't see Ramos. Saying, I think coming coming to the Pogba point, I think uh, he is going to sign a deal at United only if he doesn't get a good offer. Mm. And I don't think Madrid is Madrid. Madrid doesn't have the finances right now to afford a player like Pogba. Because, uh, I mean, I don't think it's going to be anything less than a 40, 40, 50 million, at least for Pogba. So, uh, I don't think Madrid has the finances right now. Uh, the other club which he possibly could go to is Juventus. That is an option. But again, with COVID, it's going to be difficult to uh, afford a player like this. It's, uh, it's the, problem with, with the problem with Juventus is they have players in that position. They have Ramsey, they have uh, Vincent McKenney, and they have players who are performing in that position. So Pogba might not be their priority right now, and I think it's it's just it just comes down to that if Pogba gets a better deal, better deal in the, in terms of gets to play for a better team, he's going to go. But United is going to be like his last resort. If he doesn't get anything, he's going to come back and sign a deal with United. Also, Priyan, I think more than Juventus having uh, Weston McKenna, Arthur, or whatever. Is, I don't think they can afford the wages of both Pogba and Ronaldo. So they either have to ship Ronaldo off or uh, well. Or not get Pogba. But I don't see why I don't think swaps of high profile players are going to happen the way y'all are saying they will, is because of the fa- simple fact that it's very hard to agree on the transfer fees. So if you're going to swap, let's say, for example, a Lingard for, let's say, a Declan Rice, what would be the fee you'd, as Manchester United, what fee would you be willing to pay for a Declan Rice plus a Lingard? How do you value that deal? 
So those are the issues where people are going to get stuck up on and that is why high profile swaps will not happen. And that is the reason when this transfer season, it didn't happen. If it was to happen, it could have happened in this season as well. And yet it didn't happen. It's very hard to agree on these valuations because how much do you pay? Do you pay 40 million for a Declan Rice plus Lingard? So is Declan Rice about a 70, 75 million worth player then? So how do you decide these valuations is what's going to be a challenging thing in these swaps. But uh, I think uh, from Madrid's perspective, if you were going to swap, I think I think Fede Valverde is someone that looks good. Uh, but I don't think they're going to go for that swap. Uh, Isco is probably something they might look to offload for Pogba. But apart from that, I don't think so. Anyone is coming. But sir, I want to know why you think uh, Ramos is not going to happen. I mean, it, you remember it happened all those years back, right? Ramos uh, saying that he'll join Manchester United. He'll leave Madrid only to sign uh, a new contract. He used us uh, last time and I think he's, he's doing the same thing again to, you know, get that new co- uh, con- contract out of Madrid. So, and I, I really don't see this happening because... Uh, I I think this is too competent for Manchester United to do. I don't I, I, I don't I, I just think it's too too competent for Manchester United to do. We're not going to do this. In fact, you know what? You know what? I I, I tell you this. I tell you this. You know what's going to happen? What what positions do we need? We need uh, arguably we need a centre back and a, a centre uh, CDM. But but. Sancho is for less money. So, uh, obviously, our, the, the board's going to go after Sancho and then, then they're going to sign him and say, oh, we got Sancho, which who, who was supposed to come in last summer, who we wasted last summer on, right? But and, now Ed Woodward comes off as this great tactical genius, no, in negotiation. That's the point. He's got a low ball no, you know, with a you know, you know you've, you've brought up Ed Woodward and that's why I want to come in. Ed Woodward, let me, let me put this. I was reading this about United recently. Financially, we have dropped like four to five places because of COVID. Okay, uh, Ed Woodward markets himself to be the best uh, businessman who can run a football club or whatnot. And over over COVID, he's managed to allow Liverpool to earn way more than Manchester United. So basically, this man cannot do anything good when the tables are turned against him. I mean, we already know he doesn't have a footballing side to him. But when it comes to Which managing, you say that he money, agreed not to pay 120 million for Sancho. And it seems like 60 to 70 million for Jaden Sanchez a done deal this summer. No, yeah. but that from the reason, the reason there are multiple reasons to this. Let's not let's not go into that. I mean, Jaden Sancho's price drop is mainly because of his form. No, so we should forget Ed Woodward. My question is, was Jaden Sancho worth the 120 million in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. I think he was always worth the money. I just think that the issue again, again, 120 is a bit too much. 100 million, okay. But the issue that I think that has happened is Jaden Sancho was mentally prepared to join United. When he had to go back to Dortmund, it took him a while to get used to the situation that he's gone back, he's meeting those people again. And now he's again kicked up in form. I think he's he's he scored 35 goals and he's the youngest in Bundesliga. He's he's making those goals. He's yeah, that 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 legend of a player, Haaland, is getting his services in, in every game whatsoever. So with time, once he's got recuperated with the situation, he's showing his form again. So I think Vishesh, my take on this is simple. If Jack Grealish was overpriced at 80 million, then Jaren Sancho was way, way, way overpriced at 100 million. And I've been saying this since the last season that Jack Grealish for 80 million would be a bargain. And everybody was coming out and saying he's overhyped because he's English. And just look at the way this guy plays. Put Cavani in front of him and... It's just sad that we're not going to sign Jack Grealish and he's going to replace David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne and David, Jack Grealish are going to play in a midfield. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say this. If this does happen, Jack Grealish will be an improvement on David Silva. And I don't think there are any... There are probably four players in the world who can be an improvement on David Silva. And he's one of them. He's that good. And it's just it's just frustrating that we didn't make that deal happen when it was going... When, when it was so easy to make it happen last season, and now every club is in for him. Yeah, and you know, this, this is a recurring thing, right? We want, we want to get players, right? We've scouted all those players. We know their potential, right? We somehow mess up the whole deal, and then once they are global stars, then we go back in for them, and that that time we are out of the race. It's the right? Dortmund trio. It's, we, we scouted how long we scouted... Sancho and we scouted Bellingham and those yeah. three are running the show at Dortmund right now. Yeah, and but just coming to Dortmund, I would like to ask all of you, if you're getting Holland or uh, Sancho, who would you take right there's now? No, there's no debate. There's no debate. 
Erling Haaland is on the path to become one of the best goal scorers. Jadon Sancho, for all his qualities, he's not Erling Haaland. Right, exactly. I w- I would take Haaland over Sancho any day of the week. So if you ask, like I know people keep talking about Jadon. Like in la- last season as well, I was having these conversations. You know that no, I take Jadon Sancho over Harry Kane. Harry Kane, and I was just like, if there's just one signing I could have in the entire world, I'd take Harry Kane. Harry Kane, and this season he's proven how versatile he is. He's a, he, he's accustomed to English football. He's going to get you goals. He's going to score twenty goals if he plays thirty games. There's no question about it. He's getting assists now. This guy is an absolute tank. He's the best striker in the world. I kept saying it. Vishesh and Rishi kept laughing at me. They were, oh, what are you talking about? Harry Kane is simply the best striker in the world. He does not need to even score to influence games. He's playing this quarterback role almost where he launches balls forward. He's smart. He's tenacious. He's He's an absolutely, and he's not slow. People keep saying he's slow. His movement on the ball when he runs with it, you can't say he's slow. He's a very smart player. He knows what he wants to do. He knows when to fall. He's basically, I mean, he's the one player. If you ask me, whom you'd sign? I'd sign Harry Kane. I shut. I'd even pay 150 million for this guy. He is the real deal. Yeah, I mean, let me let me, uh, uh, Priyan. I think you're muted. You were saying something, but yeah. Uh, what I was saying was, I think I think I agree with all of you. All. Erling Haaland is a player for the future. I think again, there are multiple reasons why we didn't sign him. And let let's be honest. I think it was a good thing that we didn't sign him. I don't want to have a player with a 75 million release clause mentioned in there where he stays for two years and then just leaves. Plus, I'm done with the problem. Which is you win the Premier League in 75 million in two years? What's the problem? No, Prasham, that's all my, the, the point being, are you ready to deal with another Mino Raiole situation where he just comes if, out and if, keeps talking? If a player wins me the Premier League, I'm ready to deal with 10 Mino Raiolas. It doesn't matter. You're a football club at the end of the day. You have to deal with people. If you're a business at the end of the day, where your main business is to win trophies, you deal with people. You get it done. You get things over with. That's what Sir Alex Ferguson was so good at. That's what, that's what this club was... That's what David Gill was so good at. It doesn't matter. There are absolutely... Useless people in every walk of life. You deal with it if you have to get your job done. Eric ha- Erling Haaland can probably win you a Premier League or at least the Europa League on his own. And if he's going to stay for two years and leave for 75 million, and if I've signed him for 40 million, if he's won me a trophy and I'm getting a 35 million profit on him, I don't see what the problem is. Let him use me as a stepping stone. What did I can you go back and say Cristiano Ronaldo used us as a stepping stone? Well, who cares? Who, nobody cares. Carlos Tevez went to City. People criticize him. Poor man didn't understand English. Whatever people criticize him for that. Well, he won you a Champions League and a Premier League. Just shut up and just enjoy that. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're in the business of winning. If we get the 21st Premier League title, nobody's going to say, oh, Erling Haaland used United as a stepping stone. Nobody cares. That, that's an interesting take to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, just... Uh... <laughs> The lineups have been announced, and uh, so there's no McTominay. There's Matic playing with Fred, and Dan James on the right. So has Dan James found a place in our squad now after the Real Sociedad game? Also, also Short Ayer and uh, Diallo both on the bench. Amad Diallo, Amad Diallo is already the greatest player I've all. all I've you, did you not know? Did you not know? James only ball, managed to score a single touch on the ball. He guided the ball into the net to this professor. Exactly. <laughs> it was it was all it was all Diallo. Diallo managed to get James to score. It was it was brilliant. But but Dan James is an interesting one, man. He's again, he's like Lingard. I don't think he's got a future at United. He's got no technical ability. He's just he's just got pace. He's a bit like Gareth Bale almost, but Gareth Bale had more power in his shots. That's it. Mm-hmm. To be honest, what is Gareth Bale? He's a pace merchant who had who has a strong foot and he can shoot. Or is Dan James? He's a pace merchant, and then that's it. So I don't think he has a future at United. I mean, he's Cavani's injured. You know, at the start of the season, um, I I was seeing Leicester games, and I saw Harvey Barnes, and I used to fi- feel I thought that Dan James is a much better. He's they're very similar. You know, uh, short people uh, they rely on their pace a lot. But recently, I think today the Aston Villa game, Leicester Aston Villa. I saw Javi Barnes play, and he's not only all pace. He has a lot of skill. He can he times his runs very well. He carries the ball very well. And um, I mean, I don't I don't see Dan James do that. This people say that he had a good game against Osirat, but 
uh, I think he played a very safe game. He he just there was no uh, directness. He passed it back and no, but he had, he had and, a good game by Dan James standards. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, but that's not United standard per exactly. se. Oh, you but, are, but, but see, Priyan, I think about Javi Barnes. You say, I mean, I've I've been watching Javi Barnes and Damari Gray. I like, I really like watching Damari Gray play. I think Javi Barnes is in the similar similar mold. But it's all about that decision making. At the end of the day, after with that all that pace, what do you do? Can you get in the right position and can you release the ball then at the right time? Javi Barnes is a terrific player. He is he is he is an absolutely terrific player. Damari Gray is a little like, bit like Dan James with more technical ability because he can he can really cut a lot of players very well. That Leicester team has a lot of quality in it. Yeah. Man for man, there are players in that Leicester team who are probably better than our players, to be honest. Hey, I want to I want to ask you guys something. Dan James was uh, linked to Leeds again a couple of months back. Do you think he would have been better under Bielsa than he is under Solskjaer, or do you think it, it would have been the same Dan James again? I mean, it's a counterfactual, no, Sid. I mean, I can say yes or no. It's not going to make any difference. But I think he would definitely fit the lead style a lot because he can run for the entire 90 minutes. That's number one. Bielsa would probably play him as right wing back or something where he has the ability to just run up and down and pop up. So, maybe that game suits him more. And, I mean, obviously, I mean, Bielsa would get him to play in a certain way where he does not need to look good. He just needs to work hard. And that is something he can do that you have to give him credit for. That That is definitely something he does. He works very hard. And I think that's why he'd fit that Leeds mold very well. But apart from that, I don't think it's much to do with the coaching or anything. It's just the style of play is that it suits him. Yeah. But but what 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 I find interesting is I, I mean, I think it would be unfair if you don't talk about it at all. And I mean, it's such a tragedy. I think we need to talk about it. Uh, Liverpool. I mean. I think I think we should we could shed a tear or two for how difficult it is. The wind and the rain and the firecracker. No, let, let me let me let me put this pressure, man. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna end this full Liverpool debate out here. Okay, Liverpool, Virgil Van Dijk. Without Virgil Van Dijk, they're nothing. nothing. Right? Uh, they're the best team in Europe, but one player loses it, so they cannot retain the title. But that's as you said because of the wind, the grass, the fixture list, the you know weird season this is. There's COVID. No, no, there's wind. Season. No, I mean, let's just go back. I mean, you know, there was this time when United won the league and the very next season, uh, Stamp didn't play for almost majority of the season. But we still ended up either winning it or coming second, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas this so-called best team in Europe who has won everything and is possibly, you know, has the best possible manager and the best set of 11 and the best whatever, lost one player and they, they're what? They're like... 19 points of the title. They're, they're uh, uh, probably, if we win today, nine points of uh, uh, the appeal miss. teacher, uh, which has who has the also. Um, they, they, Everton is going to probably go above them. So, 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 but no, let's let's end it. Jamie Carragher's Jamie Carragher, Graham Sound. No, no, Vishesh, all of this them. is the greatest team yeah. to have ever won the Premier League. Yeah. They won the, how can you Vishesh, tell me which other team? has won the Champions League the year before, come second, and then won the Premier League the next year. Unthi- never before. No team. No team. The, the, no, no, no. No. Asha, no team has ever won the Champions League only. No team has won the Champions League and the Premier League. This is the only team that has done it. No there team, is no team that no has team. done both. No team. Tre- what is so, a treble? I don't know what a treble is. I have never experienced no, a treble. Mishesh, have you ever heard of a team winning, it, winning three Premier Leagues back-to-back? Never has no, it been man. done twice. No, 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 no. no. Bro, I've not heard <laughs> once also. You're saying twice, not even once. Bro, 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 have you heard of this these these two defenders who kept like a clear like no conceded no goals for like almost the entire season or something like that? I know like, Vishesh, have you heard of this great manager whom we don't like, uh, but uh, who is great? Conceded only 13 goals in an entire Premier League season and broke the points record. But Liverpool's achievement is better than them, even that. Because Klopp takes four well, years it's, to it's build a Premier League. Liverpool. Some do it in one year, but Liverpool's achievement is great. I mean, it, it's it's it's. I, I mean, to just get off it a little bit, I just want to put this in perspective. I mean, yes, they have injuries. Yes, they have injuries. Yes, they have been hit. The best player is probably out. 
they yet have mohammed salah they yet have sadio mane they yet have roberto firmino they yet have thiago alcantara who's coming off a treble victory they yet have jorginho wijnaldum they they have these five players who are proper attacking players they have trent they have the andrew robertson they have their main no, 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 forget, attacking sir, forget that. forget forget the back forget the back five forget the forget the defensive okay van dijk is not there no so they have a lot of pressure they have to defend so yeah. what happened to this free flowing attacking football that klopp used to play that they can't score a goal mm. that they just cannot score a goal what happened to that and just remember sir alex ferguson won the premier league with danny welbeck as a second striker and tom cleverley in midfield so never again compare a circus clown to sir alex never again compare a achievement like blackburn rovers and leicester city to manchester united's achievements this team is a great team when all 11 t- players are fit that means it does not it, it's a great 11 it's not a great team okay man for man probably the first 11 is a great 11 but what makes a great team is not just 11 players what goes in the background what kind of youth players do you have what do you do when you're thrown with adversity i mean let's not forget we won the we won the premier league with wayne rooney not playing half the season and ronaldo having left so you know these are not things that we are making up here it is possible and let's give him in guardiola credit he's essentially found a way to be winning this premier league without a striker essentially there is no striker ilkay gundogan has he's just transformed ilkay gundogan completely and, and without de bruyne he's yeah, coming right now yeah, yeah without so they need to cross this best player and he's team rolling opponents they're not conceding goals he found a method where he's just like i'm not going to concede and then i'll win 1 nil also it's okay and it I means that is what you call facing adversity and klopp at the end of the day we all know it after four seasons or five seasons he just doesn't work at a club and i think he's next in line to get sacked along with jose mourinho i mean i i wouldn't go as much as sacked but definitely i think he's done after this year i think he's going to go and coach germany in the world cup next year i i think that's his plan or something like oh, that oh passion in the world cup come on <laughs> tony rudiger at the back would love to see that uh so guys i just want to switch poles go to somewhere closer to the bottom uh, i want to talk about arsenal right <laughs> <laughs> What what what's happening to Arsenal? A team which who are the invincibles and all that suddenly they can't even beat Aston Villa, right? A team a team who could even help. And man, Arsenal is not a top seven or a top eight club. Also, they don't have the players. I mean, Aubameyang of course is a very good player, but Aubameyang is not. I know Arsenal fans will outrage after listening to this, but he's not in the top five strikers or goal scorers in the in the league. what can opomian offer you run off the left and shoot apart from that his ability is rather limited and he is a professional bottler i mean he's a he is one of those professional bottlers where you know if it's a big game you can put money on him to bottle it hmm. this man is a professional bottler he's never achieved anything in his life when he got to lift the one trophy he got he dropped it so he is a professional bottler so i don't i don't i don't see any reason why arsenal should be doing well Kieran Tierney is supposed to be the reincarnation of Ashley Cole. So they, they don't have the squad, and they're not going to do anything else. So I don't think there is any discussion over there left. I mean, they were the invincibles, yes. I mean, they keep talking about that, but well, they aren't anymore, obviously. And the team is just not good enough. So I think that's that with Arsenal. Right. Um. You know, I just want to end this video on this quick uh, question. for all the three of you all who are the top five strikers in the league since prasham brought that up right now who are the top, top five, five strikers i don't think there are five strikers who are nominated to make the top five in in the current scenario this just the top i think i think harry kane is number one without doubt yeah. i don't think there's any doubt in my mind i think give me body maybe i think a close second so i'm not counting mohammed salah i mean do you want us to count the forwards as salah as well so then salah would be two Yeah, if so I count the forwards, so then Salah is probably second. Uh, Vardy is third. Ings is probably fourth. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's a hard time to find five good strikers in the league at the moment. Ings is got to be fourth, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't think there's a fifth one for me. Yeah, I think I, D C has really... started well, but he's trailed off. Yeah. Uh, Ollie Watkins maybe he's playing well, but it's just a season, you know. He's not. You know what? Case for Ollie Watkins, yeah. I mean, then you'd have to go for Patrick Bamford, no? That's also true. 
I mean, no one has even cared to mention the likes of Mason Greenwood, Martial. Martial's been horribly out of form. Martial's been horrible. Martial's horrible. I'll tell you this, Vishesh. Mason Greenwood and Martial don't make my list of 15 also. You need to actually put the ball in the back of the net to be counted as a strike. Hmm. For all your step overs and coming in from the left and shooting, if you're not going to score in 17 games, if you're going to score one goal, you're not a striker. Hmm. Right. Okay, so on that note, let's end the video. Uh, guys, I hope you liked the video. This was, this was super fun to shoot. Uh, please do like this video, comment what you think, who are the top five uh, strikers in, or forwards in the league for you at the moment. And do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We will see you soon with the Chelsea preview in, the, in a couple of days. See you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This video has been brought to you by WAC Essentials. They have some of the craziest football t-shirts you'll see. You can see some of them on your screen right now. We've also added the link to their website on your screen. Do check them out. Visit their website. And for the special viewers of United Star, we have a really great offer for you. That is at checkout, you can get a 10% discount on your purchase if you use the code United Star. That is U-N-I-T-E-D-S-T-A-R. So do check WAC Essentials out and avail your 10% discount using this code. Delivery is free all over India. Please do like, share and comment on this video and do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We have some great content lined up for you and we will see you very, very, very soon.